let's talk about something called arguments and keyword arguments. I mean, we've already seen that before, right? With a function, we actually have the special characters that we can use called args and star star keyword args. How can we use these? Well, let's have a look. Let's try and have a function, let's say define, and we'll call this a super func for a super function that receives some sort of arguments. And these arguments that we're going to receive, and remember, although I'm calling these args, this itself is a parameter, remember? But let's say that we want to just return some of the arguments. And you might be wondering, wait, 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 some, don't we have to define that function? Well, some actually exists in Python, as you can see over here. So we can just return the sum of the arguments. So let's try this. Let's say super func and give it arguments one, two, three, four, five. If I click run, hmm, I get an error. Super func takes one positional argument, but five were given. And that makes sense, right? Like I only have one parameter here, which is a positional argument that it accepts, and I'm trying to sum this. So it only receives one, but I'm giving it to all these things that it doesn't know about. And this is where we can use something like this. By adding a star to here, we're saying, hey, this can accept any number of positional arguments like this, as many as I want. As a matter of fact, let's print this out. If I do print star args, and we run this function, we see that the print star args gives us one, two, three, four, five. These are all the parameters or the arguments that we get. And if I actually remove the star here and click run, look at that, I actually get this as a tuple. So args inside of this function is a tuple of arguments that I give it, one, two, three, four, five. So sum of the tuple one, two, three, four, five is going to give us the right answer. It's going to print for us the answer 15. Very, very cool. So this way we can extend and use our star args to have in a, a function that can accept any number of arguments. So what is this one now? Well, this one allows us to use keyword arguments. For example, let's say I have the star star keyword args like this. And by the way, this can technically be anything. So this is a variable that we're creating. So I can name it who if I wanted to, but the standard is to name it args and keyword args because other developers are using it this way and it's just the way it's done in the Python community. Now with the keyword args, as you might have guessed, I can add keywords like num1 equals 5 and then num2 equals 10. So that if I print the keyword args and I click run, I get a dictionary of num1 equals to 5 and num2 equals to 10. So I can actually do something like sum plus sum of items in the keyword args and grab the values, right? We've seen that before. And let's actually grab this and do a for loop and say items in keyword args dot values, remember to grab the values over here. And in here, just add up the totals. So let's say that in here, total equals or plus equals items. And we'll add a total in here that is initially zero. So that sum will be sum args 
plus total. If I run this, I get 30, which looks about right. Now, this does look a little confusing, so let's go over it. We have the star args, which allow us to grab these positional arguments and just sum everything. And we also have keyword args, which allow us to grab any number of keyword arguments and get a dictionary, which comes as keyword args, and then use them however we want. In our case, we're looping over all the values, so items in keyword arg values, and then I'm just going to total all those items, have a total, and just return the sum. Now, this is, again, extremely useful because our superfund can now take as many arguments, as many positional and keyword arguments as we want. Now, one final thing. There is a rule of the ordering that we can do of our parameters here, right? So the order, the rule is this. First, in our parameters, we have, well, our actual params, then we can do star args, then default parameters, then star star keyword args. Let me show you what I mean. If we want to define this function, we want to make sure that if we give it a parameter of, let's say, name, that should come before star args. And if we have default parameters, that should usually come after args, but before keyword args. So if I do, let's say, i equals hi, and make sure we add a comma here, we now have following the rule. And by the way, you would never actually write a function like this because, well, frankly, it looks super confusing. Usually, you're only using two of these or maybe just one of these. But this way, I can call this function with name, Andy, then my args, then my default parameter, which will be i equals to high, which let's say we don't even pass in. And then we have this. So if we run here, this still works. We are just not using name and i. But you see that I'm following the rule of params, args, default parameters, and then keyword arcs. All right, hopefully your head doesn't hurt too much after this one. Take a break, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.